everyone, this is Melanie, and today we're going to do some more work on this Nordison painting. You can see I'm making some pretty good progress. I'm skipping the owl for now, and I'm working on all of the background first. I have a little bit different setup, and I'm recording close up as well as overhead. So I'm hoping you guys are gonna be able to just get a little bit more out of this video than you have in the past. Today I'm going to be using the three Norgeson brushes that came with the kit. In addition, I also have my pharmacy cosmetic wipes that keep my brushes in really good shape while I'm working. I also have two paint cups and I have two paint pups, a little bit of water in each one. That just means I don't have to get up and continue to go get clean water all the time. I will wash off my brush in one and rinse it in the other and maybe that will last me a little bit longer and I don't have to get up so often. Where I'm going to start is over in this corner so that you can see what I'm doing, how much paint I'm applying with my brush, etc. But before I even do that, I'm gonna open up this pack of wipes. There's very few left in here, so it's not heavy. Otherwise, I would not put this on top of my canvas. But I want to start by getting my brushes in the perfect shape. The flat one really doesn't need it. I'm gonna be selling these cosmetic wipes at my website. That is melaniegillstrap.com. And I will have a link in the description for you as well. These are the pots that I've already put some paint in. We're gonna talk about this a little bit as we go. And then I have this older art bin container that is divided. And I have gray through nine, 10 through 19, 20 through 29, 30 through 39, and 40 through 43 here with all of the extras in this compartment so that I can easily find those. I had this divided container already, so this really did come in handy for this purpose. So I'm gonna have it sitting beside me. You won't see it much throughout the video. We're going to start in this section here and I will be able to provide you with close-ups because of the other camera I have set up. Because this number 18 in here is a very thin area, I'm gonna use the Norgeson smallest brush. It does not have a size on it, but it is a very small tip. And that is what I'm gonna use for this number 18. One thing about these paint pots that I wanna mention is that if you do not get them shut completely each time, your paint will dry out. I have been able to revive some of this paint after it's dried out, but I really prefer to keep it nice and fresh from the beginning. Now, when I put this down, normally you guys know I'm working with a very different consistency. I have not added flow aid to these paints. These are a different type of paint. I leave the texture. I do not smooth these out per se. So if I overlap, I'm okay with that. I do not let it get to me. Because I already had this brush out, I started to go in here with this little tiny brush. I've already got paint on it and I'm gonna switch it, but I'm gonna go ahead and put down what paint I already have on it because I don't wanna waste it. All right, I'm gonna clean this brush off. I'm gonna reshape it on my cosmetic wipe over here. I'm gonna take this larger brush by Norgeson. It's around. Make sure it's got, it's shaped very well before I start. And that's what I'm gonna use to do this opening here that's a little larger. Now I want you to notice I'm kind of pushing. I, I don't even know how to explain this technique. That's why I video it because trying to explain it with words doesn't necessarily work. But I'm going to just kind of push it into place. I'm not being overly neat. I'm not being super careful at the lines. This is a totally different method than what we do on our normal paint by numbers. This method is gonna provide us with so much texture and I think in the end, it's gonna be something that I am so happy with 
because it's so different than what we're used to. And it doesn't take as much precision. I mean, you know, we get kind of crazy when we start getting a little too perfectionist for ourselves. And you guys know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. And we beat ourselves up about little details. Thankfully, this painting or these Nordison paintings don't really require that, that level of perfection. And they still look amazing, especially since these are abstract works, abstract designs. There is no perfection in an abstract. Technically, an abstract is something that you don't really, it doesn't really have a design. But we're definitely doing a more impasto type of painting on this kind because we're leaving the texture. I know I'm gonna talk about this texture a lot. It is a huge part of what makes this Nordison so unique. I've been using the smaller brush. Let me grab the larger round brush. And you can also use, in the larger areas, which I'm gonna do here in a minute on 38, you can also use the flat brush. So I'll do that here in a minute and show you. But for right now, I just want you to see, I'm kind of patting this on. I know there's probably a term. Here's the thing, you guys. I have degrees in visual arts. I don't have fine art degrees. I have used acrylics before, but not it's not my specialty, it's not my field. My field is graphic design and web design. That is what my trade is, my, my uh, degrees are in. But, but I have not worked with acrylics a lot. Now I've worked in graphite, charcoal, acrylic some, you know, different things. I haven't done any oil painting or anything like that. So this just shows you anyone can do this. You do not have to have an art background. That's the beauty of it. If art intimidates you, then you are approaching it all wrong. You really need to just relax and say, it's just paint. Right? Just paint. I almost want to call this messy painting <laughs> because that's kind of what it makes you feel like. I'm just going to put it down here and then use it from the center to get up to these edges and smooth it out. Not smooth it out. Um, and fill it in. Totally different method here. Now you see, I'm going over the line of 39 a little bit here. It's okay, because when I do 39 in a minute, I'm just gonna kind of mix it a little bit with that and leave it alone. And I, you guys, I wanna make sure I'm really clear. The painting is yours. You approach it how you want to. You do not have to do it this way. You do not have to pat like I'm patting. You can apply it how you feel comfortable. I am just here on YouTube and Patreon to give you guys what I do. It is not necessarily the only way, just it's the way that I do it. If you like the way I do it, then you are free to do it that way on your own. But I don't want anyone thinking I'm trying to push my techniques on them. It is your art. 
but you can see with this Norgeson painting, no two people are going to have the same outcome. I mean, it is, it's just so forgiving and it's just so, I don't even know how to explain it. Um, it's just one of those things that you guys are going to be able to feel like real artists, even if you do not have an art background or any art in your background. Now, you can also tell this is a much thicker paint than what we do when we add flow aid to our little paint pots. So even though you've seen me getting the paint out of the paint pot, I will show you how this paint looks directly out of the tube once I get this part done. And when I have to add a little bit more to this pot, which is gonna be very soon. So let's add some more. I've pretty much used all of that. So let's get a little bit more of that number 38. Since I know where it is, here are the tubes. Cute little tubes. I love these. And I've already poked holes in all of these. Now I used a paper piercing tool to poke my hole. You can use the lid if you would prefer. That is what it's designed to do. But for me, I liked how clean it was um, and I didn't make a mess or squeeze the tube when I used a paper piercing tool, I promise you. Okay, so now that I'm kind of getting into a little bit tighter areas. So I'm gonna switch to my round, my larger round brush to finish this opening. That's just my preference. I feel like I get a little more detail when I do it this way. Now, I hope this is, with the light, you can see all of that texture. Isn't it fantastic? I love it so much. So let's go in here with number 39. With our larger round brush. You see how much paint I have on there. You really can't get too much paint on your brush in these particular types of paintings because you're gonna be patting it and moving it around so much. Now, you'll also notice these paints aren't as transparent as they would be if I was just putting down a smooth coat. The yellows and golds, every paint I've ever used with yellow or gold are somewhat transparent. <laughs> 
and it is so frustrating or semi-opaque. Like it, as this is drying, this number 38 right here, I can see a little bit of that number, but it's okay because when, when that's dry, as I finish up these 39s here, I can go back and add just a little blob of paint right over that 38 and I will have it, you know, totally um, covered without having to do like an entire second layer. Hence the beauty. So you see, I have this little blob of paint and I set it in the middle and then I just kind of move it around to the edges. The paintbrush is just a tool for the paint. The paint is what makes our painting, not the paintbrush. So how we manipulate that paint with that paintbrush as a tool is how we get our end result. Now here, I got a little messy with 38. I went over that line a little bit with on 39. Guess what? Ta-da! It's gone, you guys, seriously. Amazing. So I'm at the point where I'm going to continue painting with you guys watching with some pretty music. And I will stop as I need to when I need to explain something. But in the meantime, I'm just gonna continue exactly what I'm doing, switching out brushes to suit the area that I'm working on. This one, because it has this little skinny area here, I might even start with this very small paintbrush and fill in the detail. I could fill the whole thing in with this little brush, but wider openings, it's just like I said, you can you pick the brush that seems to work best and the one that you can control best in that area. So let's get going and I'm going to put some pretty music on and you can paint with me. So now when I've gotten to this point, what I'm gonna do, instead of rotating my canvas, I'm gonna try to keep this on the camera, but I'm gonna start here and then work this way towards myself. The sides over here, I won't paint probably right away. I will do those after I'm done with the surface. I will come back and do the edges. Unless the number starts up on the top and goes around and then I'll go ahead and do it. And I'll show you what I mean right here with number 15. So this part is on the top, the surface of this canvas. And here is where we're gonna go, or start going around the edge. I'm just gonna do it pretty much like I've been doing everything else. One thing I will suggest 
If you are going to put this piece in a frame, there's really no need for you to have to do these edges. I will probably keep mine as a gallery wrap, which means art is on all sides. But if you get it too thick on the sides, if you get the texture too much on the sides and you try to put it in a frame, a standard size frame, there's a good chance it won't fit because of once the texture dries, it's gonna give it a little more thickness. And believe it or not, that little extra thickness can make a big difference in the framing. As a framing manager, I've seen that happen quite a few times. So it was something I thought about while I was painting that I have to be kind of careful just to keep the edges or the sides really smooth unless I'm just going to hang this as a gallery wrap, which is probably what I'm gonna do. I just love, to me, this is just gonna look like such an art piece that I'm okay without it having a, you know, an actual frame.
So I will continue that 33 later. Now let's go back to this area. All right, let me see if I can get in here without blocking your view. And I will paint this area without talking.
Thank you guys for being here with me today. I'll be back to do some more work on this gorgeous painting by Norgeson. Don't forget to join me on Patreon.